And now, stay tuned for the mystery program that is unique among all mystery programs. Because even when you know who is guilty, you always receive a startling surprise at the final curtain. In the Signal Oil program, The Whistler. Signal, the famous Go Farther Gasoline, invites you to sit back and enjoy another strange story by The Whistler. I am The Whistler, and I know many things for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. And now for the Signal Oil Company, the Whistler's strange story. Murder over Burma. Cliff Benton wore the oppressive heat of the Burmese night like a thick coat over his makeshift flying uniform of the Far East Importing Company. He walked slowly, deliberately through the streets of Dinjan, his face furrowed with anxiety, accented with fear. For Cliff knew what the summons from Burma Charlie meant, and he knew that there was no escape. Reluctantly, he directed his steps along the familiar narrow road that led to Burma Charlie's gambling casino. A few steps from Burma Charlie's office door, a man slid out of the shadows. What do you want, Benton? <laughs> oh, Charlie wants to see me. Just a minute. Oh. Hey, boss, a guy Benton's out here wants to see you. Send him in. The boss. Said... I heard him. Sit down. Sit down, my boy. Okay. Now, look, Charlie, I, uh... Uh, Do you know what these are, my friend? Yes, yeah, I know what they are. They're my IOUs. Exactly. They make a neat little stack, don't they? About $5,000 worth. But I told you I'd pay you as soon as I got the money. I have a record of that, too. You said that exactly one month ago. You will find I run a very efficient business, Cliff. I'm sure you do. Now, look, Charlie, I've always paid you before. You know that. Now, all of a sudden, my credit's no good. Why don't you level with me? My dear young friend, I am leveling with you. I want the $5,000 you owe me. But that's not the main thing, is it, Charlie? You want me to quit seeing Lila. That's why we're having this little chat, isn't it? Lila? Have you really been seeing the featured vocalist at my little casino? I had no idea. Oh, Chuck. Oh, you see, Cliff, I am so busy with the business end that I... Lila know. is your business, Charlie. Everyone in Din Jan knows that. I'm the only one who ever dared pay any attention to her. She liked it, Charlie, and you know it. That's why you're pulling the big foreclosing act. That would be all, Cliff. $5,000 you owe me. I want it in three days. Three days? You know I can't... I want your $5,000 on my desk in three days, Cliff. If it is not here, oh, 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 but you will see that it is, I am sure. For tragedy to touch one so young would be, well, tragic. You know I can't get that kind of money in three days. All I know is that you had better. Now, wait a minute, Charlie, wait a minute. Look, I got a proposition. I'm making a flight tomorrow to uh, deliver a load of machinery. That is a particularly uninspired bit of information. Now, listen to me, listen. I, uh, I got connections that have been trying to get me to fly contraband. They've promised me $5,000 a trip for every shipment I deliver. Now, give me a few extra days and I'll guarantee you'll have your dough. If that's what you really want. I really want to clear my books of you, Cliff. I want you to pay up and get out. From now on, Boma Charlie's casino is off limits for you. Oh, <laughs> Lila again, huh? You persist in that delusion, Cliff. And I do not care to discuss it. Now, where did you say you are supposed to pick up this merchandise? Right here in Dinjan. Then fly it to Hong Kong and they pay me on delivery. I don't get back here for five days after I leave. Give me five days, Charlie. What do you say? Guys, 
Come in here. Now, look, Charlie, all I'm asking... Oh, me, boss? Yes, come in. I have a little job for you. Okay. Gus, take a good look at this man. Mm. He's going to fly a load of machinery out of here tomorrow. I want you to meet him at Hong Kong when he arrives and stay with him until he gives you $5,000 for me. Gotcha, boss. There is a commercial airliner leaving at 10 tonight. Be on it. If for any reason the money is not forthcoming, take care of him. Understand? Right, sir, Charlie. I understand. Perfectly. Does this arrangement meet with your approval, Cliff? You're not taking any chances, are you? No. Oh, one more thing. When you leave the casino, there will be a man assigned to follow you. He will not let you out of his sight until you take off in the morning. Good night. One uh, small request, Charlie? Yes? I'd uh, like to have a farewell drink with Lila before I leave the building. I just have the feeling that I might not be seeing much more of her. And since our little arrangement has nothing at all to do with Lila, you couldn't really object. Could you now, Charlie? Ten minutes. Only ten minutes. Gus uh, will be there to remind you when your time is up. The five-day reprieve Burma Charlie has granted you doesn't mean much, does it, Cliff? Because there is no connection in Din Jan, is there? No $5,000 for flying contraband. And now, with two of Burma Charlie's men assigned to watch you, there's no chance of sneaking out of Burma without paying your debts. Lila has just finished her song as you walk into the dining room. You catch her eye and she joins you in the bar. When you finish telling her about your meeting with Burma Charlie, her lovely face is drawn and scored with fear. I've been afraid all along that something like this would happen. Well, I guess Charlie figures he owns you, or at least has controlling interest. And maybe he does. Uh, I think you know better than that, Cliff. Maybe. But does Charlie know better? Cliff, I don't know what to do. I've got to get away from here. Please help me. I don't know what I can do, Lila. You can take me with you tomorrow morning. Yes, yeah, sure, sure. But what about the hired hand Charlie's got following me? And suppose we could shake him. What about that killer he's got waiting for me in Hong Kong? No, honey. No, I'm afraid he's got us whipped. There's got to be a way out of here. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, maybe there is. What is it? Dave. Who? Dave Cummings, my co-pilot. I just thought of him. Listen, honey, in the four years since it's been since he came to work for Far East, he hasn't spent a dime he didn't have to. Why, that money belt of his is so loaded, I don't know how he gets off the ground with it. He must have at least six or seven grand in it. What's that got to do with us? Just this. I'll borrow all I can, a few hundred more than 5,000 if I can get it. We'll pay Charlie off, and before Gus takes off for Hong Kong, that'll get the two thugs off my trail. Oh, Cliff. Then tomorrow morning, you take off with Dave and me, and when we get to Hong Kong, we just leave the plane, Dave and Burma, and head for the States. What about Dave? When do we pay him back? We don't, honey. Maybe that'll teach him to trust banks. Now, look, don't forget, we take off at 7 in the morning. All right. Then... Oh. Time's up, Benton. Do you go, or do I have to help you? Well, uh, Kyla, it's been fun. Take care of yourself, honey. And who knows, maybe I'll be seeing you again one of these nice mornings. I wish there was some way to help you, Cliff, but I just can't. Like I say, this is my last trip, and I'm not going to take a chance on losing all my dough. But, Dave, I told you I'll mail it to you within a week. Honest, Cliff, I'm sorry, but watching this little bundle grow is what's kept me from getting the Burma Jollies. I just can't loan it out, especially since tomorrow's my last trip. Now, now look, be a good guy, Cliff, and hit the road, will you? I got a lot of packing to do. Look, Cliff, really, I'm sorry, but that's the way it is. <sighs> okay. No hard feelings. No, no, of course not. Well, well... Uh... Oh, look, Dave, look, you know I'm good for it. Are you sure you won't change your mind? I know I won't, Cliff. I'm hanging on to this dough. And if anybody wants even a dime of it, he'll have to get it over my dead body.
Signal's new baby that was announced only last Sunday has already been adopted by thousands of motorists throughout Signal's seven western states, from Canada to Mexico. I'm referring to the amazing new motor oil that reduces by 50% engine wear due to lubrication. New Signal Premium Motor Oil. And no wonder car owners are enthusiastic. After all, when you cut engine wear in half, you multiply performance and carefree driving pleasure. For instance, if your car is not already consuming oil, new Signal Premium will not only double the period during which you'll continue to enjoy low oil consumption, it will also keep that like new pep and power in your car twice as long. Best of all, new Signal Premium motor oil gives you these and many other benefits at no increase in price. So why gamble with the most important, the most expensive part of your car? Your motor may be wearing out twice as fast as necessary if you haven't switched to the amazing new Signal Oil that cuts in half engine wear due to lubrication. New Signal Premium Motor Oil. going well, is it, Cliff? You still owe Burma Charlie $5,000. And Dave Cummings, your co-pilot, has refused to lend you the money. You know that Burma Charlie means business. If you don't deliver the $5,000, he'll kill you. Then you recall Dave's last words, that whoever wanted his money had to get it over his dead body. That gives you the idea, a plan to pay off Burma Charlie and perhaps have a little money left for yourself. You hurry to your car and drive out to the airfield. Go straight to your plane, climb aboard, and then go forward. You take a pair of pliers out of the toolkit, reach down behind the bulkhead, and put a crimp in the line to Dave's oxygen supply. You know that your plan would never work if it weren't for the fact that the two oxygen systems operate independently of each other. You know, too, that... Men have been known to do strange things when they couldn't get enough oxygen at high altitude. The job completed, you replace the pliers. Take a final look at Dave's oxygen line. You're sure no one would notice anything was wrong. You smile in satisfaction, then leave the plane. As you start for your car, a figure steps out of the shadow. You go somewhere? <laughs> Who are you? I am a friend of Burma Charlie. He informed you tonight that there was man assigned to follow you until tomorrow morning. This man are uh, myself. Oh? Well, you can go home now. I'm not going anywhere. And you can tell Charlie that he'll get his dough. Forgive me for not delivering message. But I am forced to accompany you to ensure you against become lonesome and possible seeking company of midnight train. Where we go now? Home? Yeah. We go home, Mr. Moto. As you drive towards your apartment, your heart slowly resumes its normal pace. That was too close, wasn't it? Then as you come within sight of your destination, a thought suddenly intrudes itself. Lila, you can't take her with you tomorrow, can you? There's too much of a risk involved. The man assigned to follow you takes up a position on your doorstep as you enter your apartment. Lila. Lila, what are you doing here? Don't you oh, know that... I'm glad you're back. For a while, I was afraid you might have... Oh, if you don't know what it's been like these past few hours since you left Charlie's place. What happened? Charlie called me into his office after you left. He told me that from now on, I was his exclusive property. And that he'd kill any man I so much as looked at. How did you get here? Climbed out of the window in my dressing room. He'll kill me if he finds me. I, I can't go back. Oh, Cliff, let me stay here until the morning. And then we can go to the airport tomorrow. No. No, Lila, it's too risky. It's no good. We can't take the chance. It might ruin everything. Cliff, if I didn't know better, I'd... I think that maybe you didn't want me to go. I can't help it. I've had to change my plans. Then you don't want me to go. That's right. I don't want you to go. But... Look, baby, I might as well tell it to you straight. I've changed my mind about taking you with me to the States. Why? Why? It's very simple, Lila. I'm playing this hand by myself. 
Now, don't worry. You won't have any trouble finding yourself another boy. Another boy? Cliff, Cliff, you said... Look, that... baby, I don't owe you a thing. If I promise to take you with me, that's my business. And if I've decided to break my promise, that's also my business. You were Burma Charlie's private property before I came around. Now, there's no reason why I should break up such a cozy little arrangement like that. That's not true. Besides, you told sure, me... Sure, sure, I told you a lot of things. But you don't go with me tomorrow. Uh, however, if you're real anxious for a change, there's the midnight train you can catch. Now, go on home. I've met some pretty low people in my life, Cliff. But I don't think I ever have or ever will meet anyone quite as low as you. This is the way out, honey. I'm sorry you have to leave so soon. You burn my Charlie, my love. Did you say that train leaves at midnight? Yeah, yeah. Oh, if you need a couple Never of dollars... Never mind. Uh... I always pay my own way. And I always pay my debts. Here's the first installment. <coughs> You're getting off easy. Uh, Charlie, this is Cliff. Oh, yes, Cliff. Did you suddenly find $5,000? Uh, no, no. I just wanted to tell you that Lila left my apartment not more than five minutes ago. Oh, but I know that, Cliff. Huh? Ling telephoned the information to me as soon as she left. Oh. Now tell me something I don't know. Why are you telling me this? Hmm? Huh? Well, I just wanted to make sure that you knew this meeting with Lila wasn't my idea. And that I'm sticking to the terms of our bargain. I believe you, Chris. I know you're that smart at least. Even the weather has worked out perfectly for your plan, hasn't it, Cliff? When you reach the airport, you find just enough turbulence in the ballet to enable you to convince the chief of operations that a flight over the mountains is the wiser course. Dave should be along soon, and you hope he doesn't decide to come in and check the weather. After last night, he might grow suspicious if you were to change your flight plan on such a flimsy pretext. You whirl as you hear the door open behind you. Hiya, Cliff. Everything all set? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm getting the route forecast now. How does it look? Oh, not bad, but there's some stuff in the valley that I'm not too sure of, so I'm... I'm routing over the mountains. Oh, no, do we have to? Hmm? Why? Well, what's the matter? Oh, well, nothing. Only I'm, uh, I'm not too eager about dragging on oxygen for two, three hours. Kind of hope my last ride might be an easy one. Let me see the report, huh? Here. Well, it doesn't look too bad. I don't see what you're so worried about. Wait a minute. Let me do the figuring, will you? Okay, okay. Don't get yourself in an uproar. Oh, I'm sorry, Dave. I guess I'm a little upset about this being your last flight today. Sure, sure, Cliff. I'll, I'll wait for you out the ship. See you in a little while. You watch Dave as he leaves the operations office and goes out to the ship. You light a cigarette, drag deeply, and turn back to your paperwork. You wonder if he suspects anything. But then you're sure he can't, aren't you? When you've completed the paperwork, you relax a while to calm your nerves. Then go out to the flight line. Dave is in the cockpit, looking over an old Los Angeles newspaper. For a moment, you're tempted to ask him once more for the loan. But you're sure he hasn't changed his mind since last night. People like Dave never do. So you take off, certain that in a little while now, it will all be taken care of. As you approach the mountains, you know it's time to put your plan into effect. Dave. Yeah, what is it? The controls feel a little sloppy. Go on back and check the cargo, will you? I think it shifted when we hit that bump a while back. Oh, I don't think so. Still flying straight and level. Well, it feels a little left wing heavy. Be a good guy and check it for me, will you? It'll relieve my mind. Okay. Only I think you're being overcautious. No, Cliff. You're not being overcautious, are you? You've got to check that oxygen line again. As Dave closes the bulkhead door, you get out of your seat 
and check the crimp you made in his oxygen line last night. You make certain that it's not cut off entirely, because then Dave might notice that there wasn't any oxygen coming through the gauge on the instrument panel. It had to be crimped just so, just enough so that Dave wouldn't notice anything was wrong, until it was too late. You're sure this method is foolproof, that no one will ever be able to prove you had anything to do with Dave's death. You get back in your seat as Dave returns. Told you it was okay back there. You couldn't shift that cargo if you did a barrel roll. Well, I just wanted to make sure, that's all. You know how it is. Yeah, I guess so. Well, let's start climbing, huh? The mountains are only about 50 miles away. Right. Check oxygen. Oxygen, check. Increase the revolutions to 2300. Manifold pressure to 39. Set turbos. Roger. The ship climbs slowly, doesn't it, Cliff? It seems like hours before you reach 10,000 feet. You both put on your oxygen masks. Then the altimeter inches up slowly to 15,000 feet. At 18,000 feet, you steal a glance at Dave. Little beads of sweat fleck his forehead and his fingernails begin to turn blue. As his eyelids grow heavy, he fumbles for his gloves. As he fumbles, you know that he's on his way out. Anoxia, the army called it. Nobody ever knew they were suffering from oxygen starvation until just before they passed out. Then it was too late. Well, Dave is on his way out now. He fumbles and fumbles, trying to get his gloves on. Then settles in his seat his head slumped forward on his chest. You wait five minutes, and then call him on the intercom. Dave. Dave. I made it. He's dead. <laughs> I made it. You have to work fast now. You turn the ship around, then put it into a dive. You must descend to 10,000 feet before you can take your oxygen mask off and finish the business at hand. At 10,000 feet, you level off and engage the automatic pilot. Then you unbuckle your safety belt and drag Dave to the rear of the cargo compartment. There, you rip open his shirt, transfer his money belt to your own waist, and open the hatch. Sorry, Dave. You had your chance last night. While the radio warms up, you open the toolbox and very carefully remove the crimp in Dave's oxygen line. And then... Far East Flight 4, calling Dinjan Tower. Far East Flight 4, calling Dinjan Tower. Over. Dinjan Tower to Far East 4. Go ahead. This is Benton, co-pilot Cummings, victim of anoxia. Bailed out, tried to stop him. Couldn't do. Coming back to field. Over. Are you all right? A little groggy, but I think I can make it. Have everything ready for report. Will do. I say, take it easy. Everything will be all right. Over and out. <laughs> everything is all right, buddy. Burma Charlie, here I come. You're gonna get your dough. want a baby your car, then the motor oil for you is Signal's amazing new motor oil that reduces by 50% engine wear due to lubrication. Consider just four of the important extra ways new Signal premium motor oil helps to keep your car young for additional tens of thousands of happy miles. One, keeps oil rings clean and free. Two, controls and reduces such harmful engine deposits as carbon, gum, and varnish. Three, prevents sticking of hydraulic valve lifters. And four, stops acid corrosion and rust. Result, maintenance costs are kept down, down, down. 
the average car should actually drive twice as far before needing an overhaul due to engine wear. So save money while you save your car. If you're still using lazy old-fashioned oil, ask your nearest signal dealer to drain it out now and refill with a new hard-working signal oil that reduces by 50% engine wear due to lubrication. New Signal Premium Motor Oil. Well, Cliff, it's all over, isn't it? Your co-pilot, Dave Cummings, is dead. And you're sure that the treacherous heights of mountain range will be a safe guardian of your secret. You smile as you point the ship back in the direction of Din Jan. Dave's money belt, now strapped securely around your waist, contains enough money to pay off your IOUs to Burma Charlie. And you'll have some left over to enjoy. In the office of the chief of police, you have no trouble convincing them that Dave, apparently a victim of anoxia because of defective oxygen apparatus, had gone berserk. And despite your heroic efforts to control him, had broken away and leaped to his death. I kept my eyes on him as long as I could, sir. I never did see his chute open. Then I started to get groggy, so I stumbled back to the cockpit and switched from portable to main oxygen supply. Have you any idea as to why his oxygen supply was cut off? No, sir. That is, I don't think so, sir. The only clue I could possibly give you is that I noticed uh, ice crystals in the intake valve of my mask. Mm-hmm. That sometimes happens at extreme altitudes. Maybe Dave's mask accumulated too many crystals. Of course, that's only a guess. Sir. Yes, of course. Well, I don't see any reason why you should have to stick around here any longer. I... Oh, excuse me. Yes? Oh. Are you sure? Yes, he's here. Yes, by all means, right away. Thanks. Um, Mr. Benton, I'm, I'm afraid I'll have to detain you a while after all. What? Why? Well, what for, sir? Lila. Yes, Cliff. But the midnight train, you said... Yes, you were... I said I might take the midnight train. But when I left your place, I knew I'd been spotted by the man in front of your house. So I went out to the airport and hid in your plane. In, in my plane? This young lady claims to be a witness to your co-pilot's death, Mr. Benton. Oh, Lila. Oh, you couldn't have... Dave checked the plane before the takeoff. Checked the plane and found me, Cliff. He even set up an oxygen supply for me because he knew you were going over the mountain. I saw you throw Dave out of that plane. Wait a minute, Captain. Wait a minute. It's her word against mine. Why, how do we even know she was on the plane? She can't prove it. Oh, but I can, Cliff. Before you threw Dave out of the plane, I saw you take off his money belt. What? It's strapped around your waist right now. <laughs> Go on, Cliff. Deny that. What? Well, Mr. Benton... Can you deny it? Lila. Lila. Like I told you, Cliff, I always pay my debts. That whistle be your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, each Sunday night at this same time. Signal Oil Company has asked me to remind you this about the amazing new Signal Premium Motor Oil, which reduces by 50% engine wear due to lubrication. It's available only at independent Signal service stations from the same friendly dealers who help you go farther with Signal Gasoline. <laughs> Featured in tonight's story were Bill Foreman, Wally Mayer, Doris Singleton, Larry Dobkin, Marvin Miller, Ben Wright, and Jack Moyles. The Whistler was produced and directed by George W. Allen with story by Ross Murray, music by Wilbur Hatch, and was transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. The Whistler is entirely fictional, and all characters portrayed on The Whistler are also fictional. Any similarity of names or resemblance to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Remember at the same time next Sunday, another strange tale by The Whistler. Marvin Miller speaking for the Signal Oil Company. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.